So now we're going to take a look at the variance. The variance is a representation, it's a measure, of how much our data spread out around our mean, or that central point. There are two variances that we're focused on. One is the population, and the other is the sample. Remember from the other lectures that the population obviously refers to the entire data set that is available. So the entire population of the world, the old populations of human beings, if we look at temperature, which we're going to discuss. And a sample is basically, since we can't always measure the entire population, we can't ask everybody, we normally take a sample of maybe 30 or 50 people, and we use that to infer information about our population or the human population or whatever demographic, if you will. Uh, we use that information to infer about that demographic that we're looking at. So let's take a look at what the formulas of the variance look like. So here are the two formulas for variance. First is the population variance, and the other is the sample variance. The two formulas look very similar. There are two obvious differences, however. The first is the formula at the top, the population variance, uses a population mean. So a good example of this would be if we're trying to measure uh, the variance of human beings' body temperature, we know that all human beings have an average temperature, if we took the population, of around 98.6 and that would represent the population mean. So we would take each observation, subtract it from that expected mean, and then square it, then divide by the number of observations that we have, so n. In the sample variance, it's very similar. We take each individual observation, but this time we subtract it from our sample mean. That's what x bar means. We're taking a sample of, say, 30 or 50 people. We take their average, and that becomes our sample mean, and that is what we know as x bar. We square it, and then we divide by n minus 1. And in both cases, we just add them all up, and that's what this symbol is. That's the symbol for sum. So let's take a look at it in practice. So here we see our GDP data set again that we've used before, and we've got two sets of columns here. One is the population variance, the other is the sample variance. And these calculations are being done by hand. I'm going to show you how we do it by hand, and then I'll show you how we use Excel to do it pretty quickly for us. So here we have our population mean. We're focused on this yellow column, and we're basically saying that the entire population, the mortality uh, ratio is going to be 30, 30 out of every 1,000. Our total observations is 195, and this was done by our COUNTIF formula from one of the previous videos. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each x, which is each individual observation, and we're going to subtract it from this. And so that's a very simple formula where we basically take our x, and we subtract it from the mu, and we end up with negative 23. Now, since we're using the formulas here in Excel, we're going to have to anchor okay, the uh, J1, because as we copy this all the way down, we need this to remain stable, and that's what those dollar signs do. They anchor the J and they anchor the 1, so if we copy it, it will not change those pieces. So now what we can do is we can copy this straight down. If I click on this little box here, drag this down all the way to the bottom, and it will basically copy that formula all the way down to the bottom. Now you'll notice that we have a lot of uh, negative numbers and positive numbers. That's the reason why we square it, because we actually want to get rid of the negative numbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically take this number and we're going to raise it to the power of 2. That's that little caret, which is shift 6, and it gives us the power of 2. We do that and we end up with this number. We'll copy this straight down. and we end up with our new numbers, and this represents everything at the top. So now that we have our squared values to remove the negative numbers, we're basically just going to divide them by n. So we will take this and divide it by our number of observations, and we end up with that number. Now, we need to be sure to anchor the J2 so that we don't lose that, and then we're going to drag this and copy it all the way down. We end up with all of these numbers, which are all positive, and when we add them up, we end up with this number. So we've added the sum uh, formula up here, J7 through J201, which gives us all of the values down through here. At this point, we have all of the values, and our population variance is 1212. Now we're going to look at the sample variance. Now in the sample variance, we'll need to get the average of our 
sampled. Now what we're going to do is we're only going to use a certain portion of this. So let's say we just sampled, let's say from 1 through 40. So we'll basically block this off so we can see what we're doing here. Let's assume that we have that as our sample. So we'll get our average. Again, using Excel, we use the average instead of mean. And I'll take all of the different values here, and we have 14 as our average. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this, and we're going to take our x and subtract the x bar, which is this number here. At this point, we just have to make sure that we anchor the n2 value, because we're going to be using the 14 as the average, and then we're going to copy this all the way down. We get our numbers. At this point, we want to square the values, so we're going to take this number, caret 2 to square it, and we get this. We'll take this number, and we'll drag this all the way down. We'll reduce the number of decimal places to make it a little bit more visible here for the squaring. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this, and we're going to divide it by 33. The reason we're doing 33 is because, if you remember here, we have, uh, this is the data set that we're using up until this number 40. Well, if we look at the bottom in Excel, it tells us that the count is 34. We need to subtract 1, so that becomes 33. So our formula basically will be to take this and divide it by 33. We will take that and we will copy this all the way down. And from here, we have all of our values. At this point, we can basically say that our sample variance will be the sum of all that. So we will basically, in this column, we'll do our sum. And this becomes the sample variance for these items. Excel gives us two really good functions to do the variance. It gives us the population variance and sample variance. So in order to do the population variance, we will just use the var.p for population variance and we will choose the entire data set, F7 to F201. Now, you'll notice the number's slightly off, but that's okay because they're close within range. It has to do with the decimal points and rounding that occurs within Excel, the formula that we use versus the way they use it. Now, for the sample variance, we'll use a similar function, var.s. Var.s will be the same thing. We'll use the set of data that we used, which was from F7 to F40. When we do that, we end up with 435.44, and you'll see we get the same exact amount.